Hey everyone, this is the Love of Cinema podcast. We like to talk movies. If you like to talk movies too, you come to the right place. And somewhere that time, you know, this whole call center thing and the recovery agent and bank, it was, it intrigued me that, you know, there's a certain kind of, there was an India which was... which is call centers which was being employed by by foreign companies where they had to speak in a language which was perhaps not theirs so there was a little bit of pretend play and for that character to then get totally blindsided by somebody else who's pretending to be somebody that she is not which is the pooja character became interesting for me Experimentation within the construct of popular Hindi cinema requires cuts. Experimentation within the construct of popular Hindi cinema on the back of big stars requires even more cuts. 15 years ago, Yash Raj Films, a studio founded by Yash Chopra, no stranger to experimentation, tried to break new ground by cranking up the cool and the crazy with a film that was a quirky blend of classic masala Hindi film themes, meta humor, and modern tarantino era ideas written and directed by someone who had grown up on classic bachchan films and after having written the first two doom films was looking to do something different something that spoke to the rapidly changing india of the mid 2000s this is himanshu and you're listening to the love of cinema podcast before moving on a friendly reminder if you enjoy organic conversations centered on indian cinema love of cinema podcast was created for people just like you so if you find value in the podcast if it helps you in discovering new films or new facets about familiar films please do consider supporting the show love of cinema podcast is my passion project and with every episode i've attempted to create something that cinephiles will continue to find value not just today but over time as well to create something that goes beyond banter beyond trending films so if you find value in the conversations on the pod do consider supporting the show your support will help me continue creating content with shelf life for fans of indian cinema like you everywhere you will find the link to support the show in the episode notes you can also support the show directly from the podcast website it's fast and it's easy to support the show and more importantly your support is greatly appreciated independent pods like this one don't have a platform for amplification and distribution independent pods rely on amplification through its listeners so if you like the episode please share the episode on social media as that will help other people discover the podcast back to today's episode later this month tashan turns 15 i'm delighted to welcome vijay krishna acharya who goes by victor on this episode to look back on a film that he wrote and directed that i have always liked and perhaps was a bit ahead of its time and if i may say so a film whose humor was lost on many to them i would like to say that i truly feel tashan's one of those films that deserves a second chance because like i said earlier there's a lot of meta quirky crazy cool stuff that you might have missed the first time On this episode, Victor and I chatted about writing the film and the four main leads. The film's widely loved soundtrack, its inventive action, the film's reception, and much more. Join us as we look back on The Tashan. Hey Victor, how are you doing? I'm very happy to be here, Manju. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Yeah, first of all, um thanks a lot for coming on the podcast to chat about uh films and uh Tashan. Uh it's a film that I really like and um you know we will chat about the film and other films as well but I just wanted to say that you know I really like Tashan and I still do and I I'm going to ask you a few questions at the end of uh, <laughs> this chat that I hope you don't mind so Victor I always uh, you know like Tashan because um I'll tell you what I see the film as you know it's this is just from a point of view of one movie goer 
you know, I essentially saw it as a quirky blend of classic masala Hindi films and the themes that we found in those films uh, with uh, modern kind of a post uh, Tarantino, post mid 90s ideas. You know, it's a meta movie. Uh, there are traces of a road movie. There is uh, some revenge drama in it. Uh, there is also traces of noir like elements uh, like femme fatale. You know, it nods and winks at the dialogue and plot elements of uh, masala films of the 70s and 80s, which I personally love a lot. And it does that by nodding to a film, uh, namely Pulp Fiction, that itself is a big nod, you know, to uh, the snappy dialogue and plot elements uh, from stories found in American pulp magazines of the early and mid 20th century. So it's very cool stuff. And, um, you know, it's quirky, it's crazy, uh, it's crazy fun. And that's why I've always liked Tushan. I just wanted to dial back the clock a little bit with you. And so it's the mid 2000s, uh, you know, with Doom and Doom 2. You have co-written uh, two of the most fun action dramas. Um, both movies clicked big time at the box office. You know, now you're on to your next project. Can you share with us what you had in mind with Tushin when you set out to write the story? It's a little bit of a walk walk down. And I I mean, I, I remember I remember it very clearly. I remember the laptop and I remember the room and I remember the view from the window outside. So uh, Doom. And Doom 2 had were over. I uh, I was obviously keen to direct a film because uh, that's what I had come to Bombay to do. And I thought I was always a writer by default as uh, I was writing. But I I think I inevitably always wrote more like a director. So I, I mean, I, I wrote with perhaps annoyingly, but with sound cues and 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 visual descriptions because it was important for me to put it out there out of my mind onto and i and i like i li- i like visuals i like the i, I like uh, i think if really great uh, attempt of any kind of cool good films has to have uh, sort of the ring of 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 great dialogue at the same time it has to have some push you know when it comes to the way we consume it on screen, what is it that makes it screen worthy? So um, the the thing which I I feel uh, I was very conscious of was that I didn't want to do a film which would uh, be a reminder of the Dhoom franchise uh, because a I had I had done it as a writer uh, and I I'm. And it was a blast. Writing Doom was, you know, at that point of time, I was I was writing a, a fair amount of television before that. And uh, it just kind of very organically segued into uh, into film for me. Uh, but one more thing happens while I was writing Tashan, and I had written the film till the interval point when uh, I got a call from, I got a call from Shad, Shad Ali, who's, who's a very dear uh, friend and he called me to say that uh, that we are in Istanbul and Mani sir is making this film called Guru and uh, would you be free to sort of take a look at it and I said I'm I'm starting my own film I've you know written till the interval and I'm not sure whether I want to sort of I wasn't very sure what what the dynamics might be um, I used to feel very strongly about my role as a writer was to finish the script, preferably you no know, changes. Once it's locked, it's delivered. I rarely go to the set unless there is a requirement because, you know, as a writer, you always feel you're, you're in the way. As a director, you feel everybody else is in your way, you know. So so sometimes you just have to uh, swing with that. And Guru happened and it was truly one of the most uh, challenging and rewarding experiences for me as a writer. Uh, because I think Manisha and I kind of we got on quite well very early on and uh, pretty much wrote the film on the fly, which was which was very new for me. But it just it, it, and it liberated me. Uh, so I finished Guru and then I come back uh, and I finish the script of Tashin. So I think a certain amount of uh, um, I don't know because I was on 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 sets of Guru at all times. Uh, I think 
there is something that comes back with you you know in in very sort of very tangential ways uh, uh all the faults of course continue to remain mine but if there is something nice then i'd say that that experience kind of just it opens a few few locks for you um so for me i think when i started writing passion the the first voice over that i wrote was the voice over for what was played by self the jimmy cliff character and what i wrote was that it's a it's a shot of of the earth and as the camera kind of zooms in the voice over says uh, you know my teacher always used to say that everything is connected i thought it was a bunch of bullshit but little was i to know that at some point of my time in my life i really get to know that everything's fucking connected and that's so that that's kind of gave me you know i mean writing is really like you're you're in a stormy sea on a, on a thing which is which you think is a boat but it's actually just an inverted tree skin or something you know <laughs> you're, you're, uh, so 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 if you get some idea which kind of moors it or gives you an oar to sort of help you along the way uh, that was the thing for me that somehow i felt that the my inherent voice whether it is because of my college or literature or theater or whatever is slightly on the questioning side is so it felt as if if i could if i could shift the the grammar of the structure that that hindi films seem to follow which is you know we are constantly chafing against it it's told it and yes there is a three act and there is this not, my mind, i really don't I, i don't understand all this uh, act structure I, i mean i understand it but i i'm not going to say that this is the only way to make a film or to write a film so tashan in that sense was born out of this thing of can i can i shift things can i uh, can we talk about characters who are not necessarily noble or virtuous and and yet as we go along is it possible for us to like them is it possible for us to see small bits of ourselves in them it was in that sense it's far more character oriented so there uh, and then you have to die on that hill you know the, so it's jimmy cliff who's who comes from this very uh, uh, some of those scenes we we kind of we lost on the edit but the idea was this this boy who comes from a small town in gujarat but now is a call center guy because his english is good and it's a little bit of this double double life that he leaves uh, so his name is jimmy makwana but he is actually becomes jimmy cliff and uh, and somewhere that time you know this whole call center thing and the recovery agent and bank it was it intrigued me that you know there is a certain kind of there was an india which was which is call centers which was being employed by by foreign companies where they had to speak in a language which was perhaps not theirs so there was a little bit of pretend play and for that character to then get totally blindsided by somebody else who's pretending to be somebody that she is not which is the pooja character became interesting for me of course uh, the 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 trip of tashan sort of lands in the introduction of bachchan pandey's character who's the sort of uh, heartland and yes there are nods you know there are the nods are uh, I mean, I grew up in a generation which sort of just adored uh, Bachchan. The whole Ganga Kinare Wala thing is just, you know, you can't. I don't think you can escape it, and I don't want to escape it. I just, you know, it. It's just, so. So I think for me, the drop of Anil Kapoor saying, "Ki iska jawab milega," you know, you will find the answer where where all answers are found, which is Ganga Kinare, and. And, and that is somehow as indian as it gets for me you know so you we all try and look for some answer there so that i think this kind of a uh, this kind of an energy and a, a conscious i think desire to stay away from what i had already done uh, i'd also done the dialogue for another film called pyar ke side effect just before uh, do uh, and and guru so they were all films much more in the mold of the of the hindi film and i think tashan gave me an energy to go go into these different people and this india where english seems to be a thing 
so much so that you can't be a heartland gangster unless you have some grasp of it you know uh and that became uh that became a conceit to sort of uh go on right we'll talk more about the characters uh victor but before we move on i just wanted to talk about uh the opening scene of tashan which i really like uh you know we see a car that kabhi kabhi mere dil mein yeah yes we see a car that's <laughs> hurtling either side of the road as the music on the yeah. car radio keeps on switching between uh kayams kabhi kabhi mere dil mein and acdc's i went to hell yeah. and it yeah. it's a great scene because it throws you right into the deep end there is no build up and there is that subtle dichotomy at play too you know courtesy the lyrics of the two songs which i thought you know i am on a highway to quote unquote hell yes and yeah. tumhe zameen pe bulaya <laughs> <laughs> may really from heaven of course so yeah. what yeah. what's going on there so that like i told you that i, I first wrote it, wrote of this voice over you know like a god's point of view and then you go into the world and as i went along with it I, it's i mean you want to come come into something which is uh which sets you going and at that point of time it just felt i felt that the journey that both these characters were on and their respective uh their respective idiosyncrasies are perhaps best defined by the music that they would probably be listening to so obviously you you write the scene but but i think that image is what sort of grabbed me and and that's what i wrote and that's what i pitched to adi saying there's a i mean there's a highway there's a car going and suddenly it starts swerving as if in tune with the music that's being shifted and it goes over the cliff and when you're underwater that's when you when you first reveal so the sense of a foreboding a foreshadowing kind of a sense continues to uh and i think we are i mean you're a film buff so this, this is a very it's a very raymond chandler very you know it's it's the gumshoe type of a thing that uh it was that day but little was i to know that i was soon going to be you know so that that kind of it's it got a charm and i think that uh, the car thing i'm i'm i uh, in a hard beat i'd i'd start in another film like that uh, so yeah so i think that i mean today i'm certain that that gets you going far quicker uh, because you're in the middle of the action you go into the character you go into the story without a build up and i think that's amongst all the films that i've done that's gradually been my learning that we have to you know just go right. just cut to the chase right right and it works i i think it works big time at least for me it worked big time yeah uh the, the four main characters in the film victor um uh first of all bhaiya ji you know um happy to <laughs> happy to lot you today i mean bhaiya ji's english and those nods to uh, bachchan are totally land yeah. you know anil kapoor has some of the best scenes uh, from the film uh, my favorite yeah. one is where um, you know ak rips open his shirt and underneath we see a fishnet bunya and a knotted yeah. handkerchief around his neck yeah alluding to his roots and where he comes from yeah but yeah. we also see his clean shaven chest a double impact meta yeah. scene if you will <laughs> i thought that yeah. was a great scene but uh talk I'll to uh, us a little bit about bayaji's character so but um i think when i um uh, for me also prashan was also i i wanted to uh since i was writing it for myself the brief to me was from me and and it was to it was to enjoy this ride and i like the um uh, somewhere i think i what i wanted to go for and i think uh if i'm not wrong i think that's a that is perhaps a tarantino quote which is that just when you think that you know where the film is going it turns and goes in a different direction uh i mean everybody in commercial cinema is going to tell you that's uh that's not good that's box office death but i'm saying okay i mean screw that the, if anybody really knew 
uh, you know, we'd all be sitting on pots of gold and right. we'd all be in the, like... <laughs> Nobody knows anything, right? No, we'll only be making blockbusters. So I'm thinking everybody should nail William Goldman's book and his comments that in the entertainment business, nobody knows anything. Just, you know, nail it to your forehead or to your writing desk or whatever fuck it is that you, you look at every day. But uh, but I think that that if I were to look back, that kind of so Bhaiya Ji's character came about in that kind of a journey. I had the Jimmy story. I, you know, a, a a a guy who teaches English meets a girl. The girl brings him, and there is this UP man who wants to learn English, and he's just like he's God's own man. He's kind. He's he's enamored of this guy. And then you realize he's the darkest son of a bitch from the badlands of the world. Uh, but I felt that uh, I also realized that it is a it is a kind of a type this this kind of a villain, and we've seen it like we've seen uh, villains like that on several occasions. The the most memorable, of course, is Gabbar. Uh, it's I mean I think he that's the that's the first and the last word on the on the on the villain book rule that you know this is the guy you you can't cross him you don't want to meet him in a dark alley and yet he, you can't take your eyes off him you know uh so as i wrote bhaiya ji the idea of how would bhaiya ji stand apart in this world in this kind of a post 2000 modern india world and i felt if he has this desire to be something that he's not because actually that's what the journey of everybody except puja uh, that's the journey of everybody that they are kind of not all that puja and bachchan are the only people who are kind of comfortable in their skins uh, and then came this act of trying to see if bhaiya ji could speak english which is actually the most hindi english and in his head he's speaking in english but actually it's it's hindi so it's translated but translated with just the right uh with the right amount of incompetence for it to become uh for it to become funny and and somehow it just made him made him warmer for me that here's a villain who's who's really dark but but can be enjoyable could he be enjoyable? Can I enjoy this villain? You know, and uh, I think that's what uh, that was the push for for Anil's character. And is it true that uh, Ajay Devgan was initially uh, supposed to do Bhayaji's um, uh, role? No, no. Okay, never. okay. So this, that's just internet legend. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's... Yes, all these kind of things that we see on the internet. Bachchan Pandey, on the other hand, you know, um, and uh, Victor, I want to ask you at this point, like how big of an influence was Pulp Fiction on this movie? Because, you know, I keep on seeing all these parallels, but that might be, you know, just uh, the way that I see the film. But are you a big fan of that film? Uh, I mean, like any, uh, you know, film. Actually, I'm obvious. a... So I, uh, I, have a, I have a very good, uh, very healthy respect for, uh, for Tarantino. Uh, I think he, curiously, when I first saw Pulp Fiction, I didn't sort of, I didn't like it all that much. But as I, as I went and I saw it again and I realized that he's probably one of the best dialogue writers ever. And there is a, there is a cadence that he's going for, which is not actually, which is more literally than, than, than what we uh, normally speak as it's, it's conversational, but it's, it's almost biblical sometimes, you know, it's like the Samuel Jackson uh, speech, you know, uh, in, in Pulp Fiction. And the kind of fun that he seems to have with film. So I'm a, I, I really love Kill Bill. I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really fantastic. Pulp Fiction, but while writing this film, I think more than, um, see, with Tushan, I think a film like Tushan will inevitably intrinsically there is a little bit of a of a guy Ritchie tarantino uh sort of world you know which is trying to characters yeah. who are not not noble not virtuous a a, a little tongue in cheek um and ease with violence and uh, so in those 
things i think yes for sure uh, for sure there is a uh, there is a subliminal influence subconsciously uh, right very very uh, very consciously not wanting to go that route because you know that's uh, that's kind of anathema to you because then it feels like another another like sort of a rip off but i think these are the and honestly if you ask me before every film i mean i make a playlist while i'm writing i i listen to music when i write and i think every film tends to lend itself to a in inspiration we all need to have a uh, some sort of a template that oh would i uh, could this film be lawrence of arabia could this film be you know what i mean so there's a there's a little and I, now when i look back uh, i feel tashan has much more of a uh, of any filmmaker who i i felt at that time was irreverent anybody who was taking the piss anybody who could just you know show the finger both to the studio and to the audience and i think that attitude is what that's attitude is what people like or dislike about tashan if you don't like attitude in a film and the film was bloody called tashan so this you know it's not the cure for cancer <laughs> it's just it's that's what it, the film was so i think um, i think yes today looking back i would say that even if i weren't all that conscious of the influences at that time but these were definitely the filmmakers which uh, which would probably there's a very very interesting japanese director called uh, uh, um takeshi miki and uh, he makes these like very corny very trippy films uh, but very much like our 70s uh, thing and they they all the while i've not seen many but i saw a couple and i later and funnily enough i saw the miki films after i'd made tashan and then i realized that some of it like the climax of tashan and all is could belong perhaps to a takashi miki sort of a fit just you know exploding limbs you know shit like that so uh, yeah I, I, had, i had to tone down the uh, like there was a uh, there was a shot which was when uh, saif is talking to the cops character played by yashpal sharma uh, when in rajasthan and while he's talking and suddenly there is a shot of a bullet and the blood comes on saif's face and i remember that when we first went i mean when i first saw it then internally we felt is the blood too much does it shock too much will there be a sensory issue and all that but but I, i just i mean at that point of time of course 15 years back today my position would be very different but it felt like the quickest way to to tell you you know that this is done and 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 it needs to feel palpable you know that that blood is on your face as well the shock of it you know so that's uh, yeah, that's pretty right right yeah the reason i brought up pulp fiction is uh, because uh, i was going to talk about bachchan pandey next and uh, yeah. know, he uh, reminds me of uh, butch from uh, pulp fiction a lot for some reason you know he's oh. a prideful his stuff mm. uh, no no yeah. nonsense kind of a guy but he's a good hearted nice guy you know past the rough yeah. exterior and uh, that's why i uh, always thought you know him i always see a little bit of butch in him and i love his introductory scene on the scooter <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with the raven yeah, yeah, yeah. here uh, it's quite popular yeah. among the fans of the film this is one of uh, akshay kumar's uh, best characters i think and i feel the same way about uh, karina's puja as well and we'll talk about that later but um, uh, on akshay kumar i mean that i think th- this character is so interesting and this uh, character i think is the most probably that kind of harks back to those films that you were talking about you know like 70s and 80s By the way there is a great scene I still remember and correct me if I'm wrong when there is an action uh, scene with Akshay uh when there are posters of uh, Ladla and Prod I think on the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marquee or That's it so, yeah yeah yes yeah. so, and uh, I thought you okay, maybe why did he choose those two posters you know uh, are you a big <laughs> fan of Raj Kanwar and Sushil Nair or... no those were the fans that the art department got yeah oh okay. <laughs> that's it just there was zero <laughs> <laughs> right god so but i just felt with i mean there were i think there were one or two other posters but crowd seemed to somehow uh 
sort of make the thing. And and it was, I mean, I I just shot it and it came came in handy during the edit, you know, to sort of. Uh, Bachchan Pandey's character. How how did you shape that? Process of writing, honestly, I however much I I want to sort of demystify it, uh, and I'm 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 very happy doing it, talking purely from my limited and my small space as a writer. Uh, I think the, but the organicness of it was the need for this for somebody, and and I really I I try hard as I might, I can't. fathom why except perhaps maybe the the very latent influence of jane bidoyaro for me and because of the fact that i've i my my career started as an assistant to kundan on kabhi aa kabhi na so when i when i was writing this character i mean first there was there was a need for the character that there was i wanted to you know i i'd been reading all these reports about these recovery agents who were rough they were inevitably uh, you know they they were thugs of, of some some sort and uh, uh and there was no better place to sort of see him uh except as a as a sort of a buff who who does ramleela and a guy who's kind of late for the ramleela show and he plays ravan and and while all that is happening there is some mess that happens and people are very happy to say that you know i'm uh so it was just it was just one of that and and the name of course i think the name came uh with some maybe just just one of those inspired hits it just it came as bachchan and pande and has a nice you know, ring to it just right. about as heartland as it gets and uh, and i have to say that i i uh i mean i truly enjoyed uh crafting this but when akshay came on because you know by the time he done a, i mean i knew that he was he was good with comedy and and to this day he continues to say that it is it is a very uh, cherished sort of a performance for him and by him and i i agree and i had a great time with him because he really uh he really got it and he translated and he i think he brought a quality to that to the rough guy but with a lovable or a likable soul in a very unassuming way and uh uh and i think i think he was great i really think he was great i i I I was shooting the film and I came out and I remember I came to Adi and I said you know he he's really he's he's very good he doesn't get half as much credit for his performance as for you know other shenanigans but but he's there he's uh, and he's and I mean for someone like me I like to shoot early on I like to shoot on time I like to shoot hours he was he was perfect he was he he's up at the crack of dawn he's always ready you know that's what you need you need a you need somebody who's going to swing with things so so it was uh it was truly fabulous having uh, fabulous having this entire cast i mean i right. i'd work with them in a heartbeat uh, at the first opportunity um, it tashan does so, seem yeah. like a film that everybody had fun while making it you know and, and that's usually a yeah. sign that it's a good film you know because if everybody's enjoying uh you know i was um, uh we i was going to talk about pooja afterwards uh but since we um, already spoke about bachchan pande you know this is again one of the best characters that in my opinion karina has played uh you know she's all oh, these right. things rolled into one she's kind of femme fatale you know she's a damsel in distress she's someone out to seek revenge uh and you know i was watching a chat with karina recently you know where she was asked if she thought she had an idea of the kind of impact jab we met uh, would make mm. at the time of its making and she said uh, you know while i was shooting jab we met i was so invested in tushan that that movie was on my mind most of the times like even when i was on the sets of jab we met she said that she had her bets firmly placed on tushan so you know i mm. i can 
uh, see you know why she's so good in that role and uh, uh, Pooja's character but this is this is definitely one of Karina's best and especially the character it's 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 also one for that time I mean for mid 2000 it's probably one of the most rounded uh, female characters you know because oh. usually um, uh, at least at that time um, I don't want to say uh, you know paint everything with a broad brush but most yeah, of yeah. the female characters were not really fleshed out nicely you know so in terms of Pooja, what were you looking for in Pooja? I knew very early that uh, that the character was the, she was the big sort of big card of the film. In a way, it's, it's, uh, see uh, how inevitably everybody starts referencing Shole whenever we talk of a film. Uh, she's the, she's the Thakur and, and uh, Anil is the Gabbar because she's got the personal story, she's got the vendetta, and uh, and I'd seen. Uh, I mean, of course, I, I, I knew of Karina's films and work and things, but I remember watching Yuva, and I thought she was fantastic in Yuva, and I, you know, because still that time it was she done all. Uh, the slightly bigger commercial films, you know. Uh, so her, her whole, but I saw this girl in these, you know, uh, block print kurtas and, you know, in, in Mani sir's world. And, and I thought she was fantastic. And later, of course, I asked Mani sir and I asked Karina. And I think she was not very sure what she was doing there. So, and sometimes, I think sometimes it's it's good for us all to be out of our comfort zones a little bit, you know. So uh, I was very sure that uh, casting wise, I was very sure that it had to be Karina, and uh, and I think at that and she's right. Curiously, she had signed both the films. Sort of, she'd signed Jabbi Met before she came to uh, she came to hear the script and and the narration, and uh, and she's the driver of the film in a way because it's it's she's the femme fatale. She's she's the one seeking Billy. In in some way, and uh, and she also took to the this whole sense of the physical transformation, and which of course you know it it goes in a very sort of uh, how should I put it uh, in a very superficial way. It becomes about body and this and that, but it was not that. It was uh, it was a desire, and I feel that as a filmmaker, we always feel what is it that we can do which is new for the actors because you know the audience consumes them in i mean uh, i make one film in four years but but any actor makes like three releases in a year so how do you how do you make them look different how do you make them feel different or put them in a process which makes them feel different about the role or about themselves and uh, uh and I thought he was like pretty much uh, solid on on most fronts. Uh, so I think for Pooja, the uh, I mean Chelia, the song ends up being the reveal of Pooja's character. But before that, I, I I was just thinking of this very sort of a diffident girl who you know wears these handloom kurtas and works as a lowly assistant uh, and is very sort of uh, is is childlike in her innocence and then you realize that actually she is the sharpest card of them all so yeah that's that's what the yes yes and um we got to talk about um Manoj Bhava and Sanjay Mishra, you know, before we move on from the <laughs> actors, especially their wardrobe. I mean, what an eclectic mix of, you know, active wear with headbands and warm-up jackets, <laughs> yuppie <laughs> night robes. <laughs> what was the yeah, idea I there, Victor? You know, I, I'm, you know uh, now that I think of it, I, so in my head, and, and this is something which is uh, um, open to both discussion and therapy, and I, I don't know what all, but... Uh, uh, I wanted. I think I was looking at the whole, the unity of of Anil and and his henchmen, uh, purely from the perspective of how Ginny consumes them, and then how 
we consume them as actors. I mean, as as an audience. <clears throat> Both Manoj Bawa and Sanjay Mitra are my friends from 1993, 94. Uh, we have several stories uh, and some very hairy stories as well. So we have a past, and I did. Did you work on Office? Office, by the way. Sorry to interject. No, okay. No, I didn't. I didn't. But with Manoj, I did. Uh, um, uh, my, the first show that I wrote was just Mohabbat, and Manoj was in it, and uh, and uh, Sanjay uh, uh, was both a friend, and there was another show that that I had written, which never got seen, but we worked together in that. Uh, so I wanted somebody with that kind of impeccable comic timing, and I wanted to also move away from this idea of the henchman casting. You know, there is can you cast can you cast two people who are just great on comedy, and then peel something back to see whether or not they are, you know, that they could be. You know, they they it kind of. Uh, but while I was trying to set the world, I felt that uh, Bhayaji's character was one which is trying to get, <clears throat> trying to undo the the heartland image. So you never see him in Indian ever. Similarly, these guys are wanting to upgrade themselves. So, uh, so actually, they are. I mean, they could be in a Wes Anderson film almost. You know, they they come in always symmetrical. They've got these. Um, and we went, you know, we went for gold in their uh, in their wardrobe because <laughs> I have to say that I uh, I did okay. What what felt like the most sort of violent colors, uh, uh, track pants, and uh, you know this velour kind of thing that, and 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 they look abominably cute with them, you know, with, with, which is uh, somewhere. Is one of those voiceovers that Jimmy has uh, when he breaks the fourth wall, and he says, "You know, and I had these two guys, and they were feeding me jalebi and rabri. I mean, you know, life was good." <laughs> so, so I think uh, Manoj and Sanjay. I think I wish, and now I my only thing would be that if I were to do another film like this uh, with them, or another kind of a touch and type of film, I would probably want a little more of them. Uh, Want more for their characters, you know. Have a have a deeper, greater subplot uh, because they just they just superb. They're they're, they're superb. solid actors, both of them. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I just uh, saw uh, Shanjay Mishra's uh, new film. Uh, I think it's called A Word. Uh, yeah, terrific performance. What a performance! I absolutely yeah. love that film. You, have you seen Kamyab? Oh yes, Kamiab. yes. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I had Hardik uh, Mehta on the podcast. A uh, few. Yeah, he's. Uh, I, I really ago. like Hardik Patel. Yeah, he was. Uh, I I spoke. I mean, at length to Sanjay after Kamyab, and I thought it was very nice and like very awesome, very beautiful, Absolutely. very vulnerable. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it 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 brings you to tears. Uh, it's it's uh, yeah. absolutely a terrific performance. Victor, by the way, uh, what did uh, Kundan Shah think of Tashan? I would guess that he would love this kind of a film. So I, I I brought I mean I called Kundan. Uh, if you don't mind the, sharing this, so yeah, not at all, not at all. Kundan's uh, I mean I'm I'm very happy to talk about Kundan at uh, the drop of a hat. So I remember and I remember Kundan came and saw the film and he said he said there is so much that is new in the film that you're that you're trying to do and he said it's not easy doing a caper film. It's a caper. It's not easy. It's uh, so I I think. Uh, purely from 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 that perspective there was much that that he was liking in the effort or the attempt we never really got around to discussing the film deeper than that because uh, the relationship is is such that you know he'd come for me and i know that he he was there to sort of support the film uh, in in so he he would he would be very wary of saying anything at that point of time uh and we had a great time you know chatting about it a little bit later and uh and he said there is so much that is that you have done which is new there's so much that he, he sort of he said that which was rewarding for me uh but subsequently yeah, we 
never managed to actually now when i look back and we never managed to discuss this more you know in the cold light of day as it were tashan's music i mean tashan had great soundtrack uh, and dope song picturization i really loved the way uh, falak pe and dilhara are uh, picturized what can you tell us about your brief to uh, vishal shekhar for the music of the film and then if you could also talk a little bit about the picturization of falak pe which is a beautiful song and uh, beautiful visuals and since you said you are a visuals uh, person i would love to uh, pick your brain on that see vishal shekhar i was uh, again when the talk happened about getting a music director i think it was i was very sort of i was very certain that i would want them uh, they were very happy to come on board and uh, and we had a we had a really wonderful time making the film its music it was we were done with all the all the tunes were locked within a month we were you know it was really i mean that's pretty fast uh, yeah no no it's, yeah it's i mean i made four films after that and i can tell you with in utmost honesty it was the fastest uh, but it, it also because i think they were coming in to this film with the different energy whatever they had done uh whether with yashraj or you know uh, elsewhere and uh, and they got the film they got the film they got the they got the tongue in cheek they got what it was doing they got all the nod you know this um uh, when the film tries to sort of look back at this whole 70s thing and and uh, and i think to a certain extent it was it was perhaps my tribute to what i thought was was the great era of indian mainstream film which was uh it's pastiche of course there is no indian films don't follow one genre but in, and especially if you look at the 70s and early 80s uh led like led from the front by manmohan desai they th- those films are they are robust they you cannot ignore them and they are and they land they are solid and their politics and their heart is banging it's always in the right place there's there's working class heroes there you know this it's i mean it probably is subject for another another discussion because i'm uh, it's it's one of my most sort of passionate uh, sort of theses but uh, but that i think to a certain extent maybe that's the confluence that there is this the modernism of a of a non linear narrative whether espoused by uh, tarantino or not that in in the larger large format of the hindi commercial film where there are heroes there are villains there are songs you know and i think vishal shekhar came into it with with an engagement and an innocence which was just fabulous you know it's uh, so the first song that that i the first tune that i uh, liked and said that this is what i want in the film uh, was falak tak and i said that there are these two guys and the situations are uh, and i always narrate the script to everybody who uh, is part of the crew because i feel that it's imperative that they at least know from me what it is that i want to do and what what the film sort of entails and the situations were falak tak was a gentle song it's a you know it's it's a true blue love song in that sense and uh and there was dilhara and i said i want falak tak for the gruff character because when you're in love and the love song of that character is going to be much more the way he's on the inside whereas purely from a filmic point of view if i'd given uh, dilhara to the bachan pande character it would have it would have felt okay because he was the you know he was the sort of a and dilhara i wanted to push more towards a a little bit of a rock ish uh ballad which seemed truer for the self character who was somebody who had western influences was and i, I remember in the discussion with adi he said oh don't you want this for that story and i said no I, it would be uh it will be more surprising uh, to to have this and 
and see one of the things that i was going with himanshu in tashan was the fact that i wanted to also see india i i thought i was making this indian film and i was making it with a little bit of a consciousness that there is so much that is here which is cinematically sort of unexplored but the landscape is cracking you know and and i was very seized with the idea of a, of the a road movie to sort of encapsulate the journey of these characters because the classic trope of a road movie is what you start at the start of the journey and by the time you come to the end characters have understood some truths about themselves you know blah 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 i mean it's that's normal but but to be able to do that in this landscape uh and at one point of time i thought of starting it in the northeast you know more from sikkim to towards bombay but then uh because of weather and things and then ladakh happened it just was just as an idea and i thought if i could take the film from ladakh to rajasthan and to kerala which really is the length of the country and go into the barrenness of ladakh and the heat of rajasthan are are important elements in the story that plays out there at that point of time when the characters are still rough uh their emotional lives are barren they are they are full of anger or hatred or heat and when they reach kerala by that time the love story of bachchan pandey and pooja sort of kicks in and kerala for me was always the monko of kerala uh and and rain both i think in indian films uh and for us is a is a giver you know it washes things so so i remember uh, i remember adi asking me that why do you want to do kerala won't you because you are going in in the middle of the monsoon it will be hard you know and somehow i wanted to embrace the challenge of shooting in kerala in september um because i felt i needed the sense of green i needed a, a washing away of of a skin of these characters specifically the bachchan and pooja uh kind of a character so uh and falak tak was going to come there so that sort of uh i think that aided the journey of the song because it's a character who's uh who's totally in love as an audience i'm not sure whether pooja is truly in love or whether she's just you know having him on uh and the song kind of ends with him hearing that he has to now kill jimmy's character and that bhai ji wants to marry pooja who by this time he knows is the love of his life so there was a lot that was happening uh and that through the vehicle of the song and the music pieces is where but but i i just and i love shooting in kerala i and i love shooting in all the again i shot two more films in rajasthan you know i haven't gone back to ladakh but they're just spectacular places you know you don't go wrong and uh, while we're on the music one of the greatest uh, throwaway scenes from 2000s <laughs> i think comes right after uh, dance mare song you know hey are we we got a song yeah yeah when the american dude <laughs> making holy yeah. widows yeah. Calls holy widows yeah. are we <laughs> right after the you. song uh that was pretty got, funny though that, that's that's very funny you got away with all that yeah yeah it, it was you know because i think that also came from a i mean it's a little bit of an inside joke because there's i think the way india has kind of looked at at least at that point of time and oh yes and yes. Uh, and there was a little bit of a thing and yeah about the music i have to also i must mention that um uh, while we were trying to crack what was the situation for white white face as a joke i would i would say to vishal and shekhar that you know we need uh we need a song which should uh it should be like a kajrare in its vibe and it should have the impact of a dhoom machale and you know so which is a joke really because you're trying to set up these two things and i remember this one one morning vishal came and he said i've got something i wrote it just now just give me a little time and i'll sing it to you and and he said i'm going bhojpuri on this matter and then he sang the opening of it 
which was really white white face dekhe dilbab beating fast sasura chan and that's it we just like we were done with the song that day we were it was it was a go in a way that uh, and just the sheer i think the 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 fun of the song and and a little bit of perhaps an impudence of the song is really uh, what the what the energy of the song was or you know the life that it has or or that it took uh, yeah it was it, it it was great fun it was great fun and now victor uh, let's talk about the action in the film uh, one of the film's high points is the sequence at the fort you know where we are greeted by a short man along the lines of nick nack from man with the golden gun and the action set piece of the fort is nicely done especially you know akshay's uh, action choreography there is parkour there is like matrix style um, gun fights there's even some yeah. kung fu action in the climax of the movie with akshay yeah. fighting those ninjas on the power tower what yeah. was it like uh, working with uh, peter hein and designing the action for tashan so i think uh, with peter again there was uh, uh, at that point of time i wanted to move away from what i thought was the standard way of doing action in in hindi films uh i don't know whether it was because i had just finished guru and i was coming from you know that world i i was keen to try out something which was interesting or new i'd heard about peter and he was in bombay and so you know we just went to meet him uh and it just felt um uh, it felt as if there was a certain quality that that he would have which would be different from the way we were used to shooting uh who had done the alan, action for doom doom 1 and doom 2 uh alan alan ami alan okay got it um so uh, so i started with peter but Uh, what i realized was and this was a discovery for me as well that a uh, couple of the sequences i ended up storyboarding with the with the storyboard artist uh, which was really the um, anil kapoor's introduction on the rickshaw and uh, pooja's father's murder uh, so that whole sequence actually is the first time that that action kind of comes in the film uh you know in a way and i storyboarded that on my own with the with, with the storyboard guy at that time uh, samar and uh, it somehow i think it it gave me a little sense of uh excitement about action because i had i had not written tashan like some heavy action or something but it was just that whatever happens should happen organically uh i wanted it to be a little uh how should i put it uh i wanted it to be a little extreme you know i wanted to push the and that perhaps was a little bit of the nod to the to the heyday of uh hindi films just just slightly just bordering on the unreal and uh, spectacular and then see if you can sort of quickly come back and do something something within which is done in cheek you know so uh so that i think that is what we were going with uh i feel that maybe maybe the time the tashan came on a few things i think the trip of the action maybe we we went a little little too far about a few things uh i i mean privately i have to confess that there is a there was there was something which i would have probably wanted to do differently but there was you know there was uh there was a little bit of a time and 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 that kind of a uh thing but the sense of excess i think there was a there was a sense of wanting to go for that it was not accidental and uh, and that's how the 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 damn ninjas suddenly come uh, you know uh, pretty much out of nowhere and 
which is which is i think what used to be funny about the 80s hindi film so uh, today if you were to ask me would i pull it off again uh, i'd say probably not i think i i would i would seed them in you know uh, because it can it can very easily turn around and bite you in the ass but uh, but if you seed them in well then then you then you have a good piece uh but i guess that's where i mean so if i were to step away from sort of the spotlight a bit and i mean when you see the climax of kill bill for example the first one it's an orgy of violence it's uh and there are several other i mean john wu i think is just he's a poet at at, at violence uh just does it so lyrically just is gorgeous you know and uh to a certain extent perhaps for me in 2007 as a filmmaker perhaps the desire is to try and see the uh this operatic thing and in rajasthan actually i i was what i was going for actually in that whole sequence encapsulates gets encapsulated at the end of the sequence where there is this very uh it's 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 an anio morricone type yeah of, western style uh, huddle uh, shoot shoot out uh, kind of yeah, yeah yeah and uh, so yeah i'm i'm a big sir julioni fan and uh, i'll happily uh, sort of be guilty as charge if i can get halfway to the opening sequence of once upon a time in the west that's the ultimate for me um so i i think this sense of of having been part of something which is operatic it's like when, see when you're watching opera it's it's unreal the way people are singing they're standing right next to each other and talking in falsettos but there is sometimes there is a beauty to it you know and you you can't take your eyes off and i think as a film make a oblique film viewer i'm constantly looking for these spaces where how is it that i can grab your attention and how is it that i can tell you that you know just be patient for a bit because something that i will serve you something nice i will serve you something that you're not used to at least that's the attempt now whether whether it lands whether it does well whether it co- co- commercial i don't think the filmmaker sort of desires constantly have to do with business or should have to do with business at all um so yeah so i think tashan's action if you were to ask me was going there and subsequently like within i think within a year and a half or something when i i went to see dabang in the theater and i said oh my god that's you know it's the kind of action that we were going for it's but it it took that much time for it to become also currency and and dabang was a was a superb film i mean i, I just i just loved dabang uh so yeah so i think that uh, the the action the only thing that i feel i think that in the climax we let it run for too long i think that's where i would uh both in hindsight and i think very quickly after the film came out i think we should have lost a a certain chunk uh in the action of the climax uh because that's really like that's that's full blown bloody opera you know there's water there's jet ski there's you know <laughs> jet ski the nala that too yes yeah hey while we're on this i i had saved this for the last but um do you think about the movie's reception like is that something you do I asked that because some filmmakers that I talked to you know strongly believe in analyzing you know what worked what didn't while others don't uh, because they say there is just no freaking way to really tell you know what worked or what didn't irrespective of what the trade says or does not say what's your take on that I think for me uh, Imanchu Tashan Tashan is both I mean it it's my first film as a director now uh had i directed before yes i directed i mean i've been directing things off and on from 1995 96 onwards uh 
uh, first television but this was the film and uh, also it was coming off of doom doom to guru so i had uh, i'd had a, a fair kind of success both commercial and and with guru it, it was it was a very sweet spot because it was both commercial and there was something that we were trying which sort of uh, what we didn't have in tashan was the multiplexes so the film released only in the single screens because there was a there was some uh, there was some dispute that the producers and the right right i read about it yes yeah so they couldn't they couldn't agree on some terms and i think that affected the film uh, in a very big way i see because tashan uh and trade wise what it did in in a week it was i mean i remember akshay calling me from bangkok and saying you know the, because he's very savvy with the numbers and all and he said so this is, is the business of the film and this film and adi told me later he said i I've, i've not lost money on on the film i'm not going to lose money on the film uh but but i think it became it did become a bit of a wound for me uh and i think today i can talk about it because it kind of there was a certain there was some reception and and that is the first time for me to understand that actually and maybe that's the that's the world of the net now or or, or the kind of lives or the jaggedness that 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 people lead uh that a lot of it came at me in a very strong and a very negative way and i think it made me sort of reflect uh it made me a little defensive perhaps but it also saddened me and uh, and it made me angry do uh, you mean the the reactions that people were uh, sharing with you or uh, what uh, the the numbers or what, what part of it uh, i think uh, I, i think at that point of time a because because the film didn't get a multiplex release so it was obviously tracking on numbers which were low uh i i funnily enough i i always thought that the people who will get the film would be the critics because uh compared to even compared to my other films that i've made post session this is a more nod nod wink wink kind of a film you know and uh and again i think maybe it is because it's the first your first outing as a director and if you get if you get if you get some sort of uh, negative response it kind of affects you and then of course the fact was that the film was it was a very awaited film and therefore it not doing the numbers became doubly big even uh, bigger right yeah So I think now what the wheels within the wheels I don't think that I I will never know but I I think what I've came out of it with was the fact that what was it that didn't like was it the non linear and I felt that maybe we as an audience are not ready for a for a more fragmented storytelling so we are not we are the the coolness of a film or the tropes will mean nothing because our big audience will still want it in a slightly more palatable and an understandable way that that everything that i was going for which is that a film meanders and and shifts to the left just when you think it's going to go right is perhaps not the best thing if especially if you're doing a film which needs to work at the box office and uh, and i have to confess that in true so i i i finished tashan and then i went on to write ravan for mani sir uh, again uh, but by that time i had the germ of you know so because you you mentioned easter eggs the germ of dhoop 3 happened in this time i remember i remember when i was sitting and i think it was uh it, it was born out of a certain kind of a journaling that i was doing which is i was trying to make sense of it for myself to say that are we really 
what is the world that we exist in and the world that we exist in does it always seem to be inimical to to, to ambition which is artistic uh, do we all have to bow at the altar of business and uh, and then came about this scene which at that point of time i wrote about a magician who's trying to turn tricks for a bunch of bankers but what they don't know is that this is his last ditch effort so so in a in a curious way the i think to a certain extent the the hurt and the anger that i felt after touch and i felt a bit of it today i think i can look back at it and say you know what it's fine uh i'm grateful 15 years later i'm i'm grateful that we are talking you know to you you live in san francisco uh the last actor that i worked with the first thing that he told me is it's a i love tashan it was a really cool film so it's you know it's paid me dividends the music continues to crack uh and i think the film gave me it gave me a lot it gave me a lot to think about it also it also gave me enough to know you know i can do this uh i can shoot i can do this i can do tough shit and it i think films don't tell you more you never learn about film making i think you just learn about yourself and what is it that drives you and and that's what i mean so after tashan when i make dhoom 3 which is in structure and it's a it again i wanted to go away from the two dhooms that i had written but it's a far more conventional film than say tashan uh if anything it's it follows a straighter more stolid structure it's got a prologue it's got drama it's got an interval point and so that i think but but it was still informed with a certain angst i think which came from the uh which came from this um but yeah it's i think i think my take away from tashan if i was to talk about uh even if i was to talk to myself today as a filmmaker i'd say that today an audience is far more attuned today actually perhaps today is the time that i should make another film which has got a bit of a nod and a wink and a, you know uh because see cool or cool is not it's not a learned thing you can you either have it or you don't or you can either make i mean and it's not that you uh, you set out to make a cool film you just you know the 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 characters will do it themselves after a point if we just we just have to learn to get out of the way um yeah so, completely so, yeah, agree I, think, you. i mean uh, one of the things that i try to do on this podcast is that you know i try to cover films that i liked but maybe you know did not uh, work as well as they should have and i think that they deserve a second chance and since now i mean tashan is turns 15 right uh, next month it turns 15 i think tashan would work big time uh, in today's time i i think and that's why i was going to ask you <laughs> and this might be a silly question but i was going to ask you if you have any plans of like rebooting it in any shape or form i mean uh, i can i can totally say at one point of time i did think of something which is like a spin off uh, and curiously uh, uh, a very old very dear friend of mine sent me a photograph uh 2 weeks ago and tashan was going to play in alfred talkies in town in bombay so it's uh, it's it's so funny that there is a time when everything else is just sort of uh going down the drain there's there's this 15 year old film which is going to play in a small not a small but in a single screen not the most sanitized theaters in bombay but it's going to play in in a classic art deco cinema and i i think i'll take that i'll take that as a win absolutely absolutely yeah. the eagle safety matches backsplash on bhaiyaji's <laughs> wall is now i i again saw this as a nod to uh, the red apple cigarettes uh, from tarantino's films so i thought that you know these are the matches that you use to light a red apple So, <laughs> is there really a brand like that or that was no. your um, um creation uh see i was uh, i mean the i have to sort of 
confess the, there was no talent you know connection in my head at that point of time i okay. was looking at things uh which could sort of make this stand apart and uh and now that you say it i have to look back and see i'm funnily enough i'm quite interested i think in eagles i've always i've tried to put it in two of my films now that i think of yes it. yes yes and uh, uh and uh, a production designer uh, so um, sukant and helen uh, she had this book which was and i you i love this matchbox art i love calendar art and going into the design of tashan that did play a role you know that that the calendar the slightly on your nose kitschy colors but but is there a way to sort of make the kitsch a little cool and she showed me this and i just thought that if there is this 70 mm wall you know which is behind anil with this big eagle uh because that's what he is he's he's like a predator he's he's on the prowl when we see him because this is the first time that we see him in his den till this time we have only consumed him as a tiny eating guy which also was a nod to gabbar and uh um uh, uh so yeah so i think that that matchbox art just sort of made it uh, made that set work right but Otherwise, that's a fictional was, brand right uh, that, that that i'm uh, it it was eagle no yes it 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 looks like a green uh, eagle and there is a um, yeah. woman who's like hugging the eagle i think i think <laughs> yeah. something like that no she's yeah the, yeah so you know uh, the sivakasi uh, uh, crackers used to be there used to be a company called eagle which used to have that uh, oh okay that. okay now that you mention it yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah. And, i see uh, i think we i don't know whether now i can't remember whether we added the the girl as an element or whether she was already there uh, that i don't know it just feels got it got it could have could have added that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay okay got it got it Well Victor uh, this was great fun uh, thank you so much and uh, I'm so glad I got to chat with you about this film that like I said personally I love this film uh, I even have a DVD of this film with all the uh, credits and the <laughs> the oh, director and the title yeah. and, all that. and uh, so I really hope that especially some of the younger folks uh, who have never seen this film I think they will love it I think they should uh, give it a shot and Tashin uh, streams on Netflix right Uh I think it would be on Amazon probably. It's on Amazon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll 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 put a link uh, to it in the yeah. show notes. But I really think that this is a movie that deserves to be seen. Uh, you you don't have to like it or uh, you know you but I definitely think uh, you should um, give it a shot. And I was so glad that I could ask you everything that I wanted to ask you about this film. So uh-huh. <laughs> I hope <laughs> this was worth your time. <laughs> no no it was it was lovely Himanshu thank you. Uh, it was actually quite it was great to go go down this path and because it's all unscripted and uh, even i i mean i didn't know and now that you've made me revisit it i'm i'm sort of uh, i'm i'm kind of emboldened about yeah maybe i should you know i should go back to this irreverent <laughs> Coca Snoke type of a film, you know. I fuck think, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I honestly feel this, Victor, and I don't say this just because you're on the show today or I'm talking to you right now. But I, I think, I think you're going to come pretty close uh, to um, hitting the target with your next uh, <laughs> similar kind of an yeah. effort. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, it's, see, it's all. It's yeah. I think sometimes, sometimes you know, you do something and maybe there's an, there's no audience for it and. by the time there is an audience for it you moved on you become a different person but i i think somewhere essentially we are all i mean whether we call ourselves it sounds a bit pretentious to call ourselves artists i think artisan is where i think i'm 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 happier with as as film people i think we you know you you go along you do things and you you try something out if if there is a formula it's i mean we we never came to this city to do that uh nobody at least nobody from my generation came saying i want to be uh, everybody came and said i want to be a filmmaker nobody came and said i want to be a commercial filmmaker at least most of my friends so i think there's i think it's a question of 
reliving your innocence and and just rediscovering it. I think Tashan for me comes a little bit from a space of of an innocence and and uh, and with each film you do try and inhabit a space. Sometimes you are lucky, sometimes you're not. Um, but I think that's what drives them. I think that's what in in some way and if if fifteen years later you have you remember the film or you have fond memories of the film then i i i feel it's you know it's it's rewarding but it's it's all thanks to that innocence in us both both as filmmaker and and a viewer because once the film is done it really does not belong to us it belongs to no filmmaker it only belongs to the audience and i think there's a uh, there's something very beautiful in that you know uh, i know that you mentioned uh my favorite film of one of the i mean i have a bunch but but a film which uh, at some point of time we will talk about maybe is uh, like i'm a big bimal roy fan i think he's uh is a master my mind, no doubt yes one of our masters. one of the most complete filmmakers that that have uh, had the pleasure of viewing and i can uh, the film which you know i i remember speaking to rajiv once rajiv masand and i said uh, one of my favorite films is bandini and he said oh my god i never thought that i'd be talking to the director of dhoom 3 who'd say that my favorite film is bandini and i think but that's that's precisely the thing it's you know what what we do is is something but you know you you are a collective uh, consciousness of all of this you know in some way and uh, and i feel that aspect is what i would like to think uh, stays with us to your viewers to the people who listen to the podcast that that sense of innocence you know honestly for me the best time in a theater is is when the house lights go down now of course you know this somebody's phone pops up somebody's messages and you know sometimes fucking food comes you know i i i i, I really can't get that i don't want to i don't want somebody chomping away at a pizza while i'm watching a film so but hey that's just me but i'm just saying that there is a that thrill of what am i going to see today will i see something which transports me will i see something which is which just takes me out or it gives me a little bit of a you know it gives me a bit of a hug or does it make me laugh does it make me you know shock and all all of it is valid we don't need to love everything like is good enough you know or we can just have <laughs> well said <laughs> we can just have the experience you know that's it you saw a film that's it it was a film on a friday night two and a half hours that's it you know Let, don't en- don't enshrine it is what somebody said i think i heard it and i thought it was it was wonderful he said where uh somebody was asking about wine and uh, this sort of senior gentleman and he said you know just drink it don't worship it <laughs> because when when there is that bottle which you need to worship you will know but you know just don't don't go to so that's sometimes i feel that we these days when we go to see a film we just want to be we are like at, at an altar we just want to worship things and then anything short of worshiping and we are so dissatisfied that's true and, and one of the things that has happened with social media and everything is that you know everything is polarized like even our opinions oh, about yeah. films every even our, not just opinions even our expectations from the films right we're either yeah. expecting this to be the next citizen kane or you know yeah. we are already convinced after seeing the trailer that this is shit <laughs> you know there's yeah. no middle ground i mean and i just find it ridiculous i mean you know just watch the film and then decide on its own right I mean, how you uh, felt about it but those are the times that uh, we yeah. live in yeah i guess yeah we have to live with that so, right right but thank you so much imanju it has been a, it's been a pleasure chatting with you and, thank you so uh, much victor thank you and we'll do uh, this again at some point of time yes I yes i i before i let you go i i got a the uh, sanjay told me that you're a big bachchan fan so you got to promise me that one day you'll come on the podcast to talk about your favorite bachchan film oh a, a, a bunch of them <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> listen I, i mean this this is what I, i this is what i told him and i told abhishek when i worked with him i said listen i'm 
I was born in Kanpur. I grew up with a name like Vijay in the eighties. <laughs> I said I felt that was part of an exclusive club. So you know, there are, there are only those of us who got this name, man. So it was yeah, it was great. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Thank you so okay. much, Victor. Thanks, Lovely, Manju. Thanks great. so much, man. If you like the episode, do consider supporting the show. Your support will help me continue creating content like this for fans of Indian cinema everywhere across the world. You can find the link for supporting the show in the episode notes and on the podcast website. Also, do share this episode on Twitter, Insta, or Facebook. And do subscribe, rate, and review the pod wherever you listen to your pods. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at loveofcinemasf8. Feel free to reach out there or by email with your comments, feedback, and suggestions. You can find my email in the episode notes. That's the episode. This is Himanshu signing off. And as always, thank you for listening to the Love of Cinema podcast. Mm-hmm.